Hey, I'm Sides. I'm here at NAMM. I'm doing my panel on how to build your music business. Let's jump inside. Discover how to build your own business in the music industry, from developing an idea to getting fans, clients, to getting paid. This masterclass will be presented by Side, Sabrina Seidman, a singer, songwriter, and producer who built a successful music business creating content and music for music tech companies and grew an audience of more than 200,000 people. In this session, Sides will be sharing her best business practices from negotiations to sales to finding work to time management and much more. Your speaker, Sabrina Seidman. Thank you so much for coming. I wasn't expecting this many of you here on a Sunday, so thank you. Um, let's jump right into it. So I just wanted to give you guys a brief background of my story. So you can really see that I'm just like you. I'm really nothing special, and if I can do this, you can do it too. So I graduated from Berkeley in 2012, and I majored in vocal production. And even though I went to one of the best music schools in the country, I had no idea how I was going to make money. <laughs> So then I ended up getting a job singing on a cruise ship. This was an amazing gig. I worked three to five hours a day, seven days a week. I have got to go all over the world, even got to see 40,000 penguins. <laughs> but I didn't want to do this forever. Luckily, I walked off the ship with 30K in the bank and spent it all in six months, 2-0, trying to be a singer-songwriter. <laughs> I had no idea how I was going to get 10,000 10, fans a month. I pretty much lost everything and I royally failed, got super sick, even broke my face, got Bell's palsy from all the stress. So jumped back into just singing and I worked in very successful cover bands. I even played Mike Trout's wedding. It was great high playing, it was great high paying gigs, but I always had to have a day job and I knew I always wanted to be the boss. So then I created a girl group <laughs> for cruise ships. And our first gig was May 2020. As you know, no ships were sailing on the high seas. May 2020, I lost pretty much all the money I had in my savings again, <laughs> turned 30, felt like a loser. And then finally, I landed as a sides production and finally cracked the code. So you can see this is 10 years of trials and tribulations and failure and tears and I finally did it. And since these past three years, I've worked with over 60 music tech companies. Everything in my studio was sent to me. I've sold thousands of products and the best part is I've made friends with talented creators from all over the world. Okay, let's talk about it. This is what I've learned, the pie of success. These are the things you need. One, you have to be good. You have to be good at what you do. This is where most people stop, and this is why most people sadly fail. The second thing you need is to get fans or clients, right? You need to figure out how to get these people that like what you do. Believe it or not, some people stop here. I get people DMing me that have millions of followers, way more followers than me, being like, I've been able to get a lot of attention, a lot of fans, but I haven't figured out how to convert it to sales. So that is the third piece of the pie, sales, making money. So you need all of these three things. You can't have one, you can't have the other, you have to have all three. Let's talk about each one. So being good is the bare minimum. That is the entry point, that is it. If you're the best guitar player in the world, but nobody knows it, you're just the best guitar player in the world. So then, you need to figure out how to market yourself. There are so many ways you can market yourself, and you should get creative. Something new is always around the corner. My friend walked into the bar I was working at in 2019 and said, Sabrina, get on TikTok. <laughs> and we know TikTok blew up. So um, keep, keep your eyes open to what's new, what's hot, what's coming. Okay, so here are the four most popular ways to do marketing amongst the music community. One is outreach. Outreach is spamming. Spamming works, but it's a tough job, right? Because spamming is the most rejection. If you can handle the rejection, you can keep at it, and if you learn how to do it correctly, you can succeed at it. Um, I would say that with every 1,000 people you reach out to, if, even if you reach out to them correctly, maybe two or three will bite. But if you keep at it and you keep doing it, you can, go, you can do it that route. 
Um, and you want to kind of think of outreach like a Sims game, you know? Don't just say, hey, stream my song. Say, oh, I'm doing a free live stream, or oh, I'm giving away, whatever. Or, or if you're trying to get a client, you, you start listening, showing up to their live streams. I love the thing you did in this one song. I would love to replicate it. Start building it up. Don't just spam people directly. And think about what spams have worked for you. What things that you bought on when somebody spammed you. Um, networking. Relationships are king. People want to work with their friends, right? If someone says, oh, Sabrina, I'm looking for a photographer, the first person I'm going to call are my friends, right? I'm not going to go through and put out an ad. I'm going to ask my friends. So make friends. There's a lot of people in this room that you guys can make friends with and connect with. Um, Paid ads. I really only believe in paid ads for products or something you're selling. If you're doing a paid ad correctly, for every $1 you spend, you should be making $3 or $4 or $5. But that's how it should be. You shouldn't be in the negative. I don't like doing paid ads because I don't like giving Mark Zuckerberg any more money, right? I want to make money. Um, so that's why I like social media. Um, this is where you attract and don't chase. And I also really believe that fans can't be bought, they have to be earned. So if you learn how to create great content for your target audience, everyone will come to you. It's like fishing. If you put out the right bait for the right people, they will bite, they will come to you. Okay, let's move on. So sales, this is a hot topic. I was really lucky because I had a sales job as one of my day jobs where I was selling gym memberships at Equinox and I really learned how to sell. So products, think about what can you make that your fans or clients need? And you can get really creative. Maybe if you're an independent artist, you can have them sign up for a monthly Polaroid subscription and you're sending out individual Polaroids or a surprise box or some, get, think about it, like what would your fans need? For instance, I just released a Logic Pro crash course and this is what my fans have been asking me for over and over and over again. So when I released it, I immediately got a ton of sales because this is what they wanted, this is what they were asking for. Um, services, what can you offer your fans and clients? Again, get creative with these. Even if you're an independent artist, you can do um, surprise house shows. You can do, you know, what so much stuff. Um, negotiation. So when you're negotiating, the thing that you need to do the most is listen. And so many people don't know that. Listen for the pain point. What are people struggling with and how can you offer a solution, right? So if you're trying to get a client as a producer, ask them. How was your experience with other producers? What did you like? What didn't you like? And then pay attention to what they didn't like and then you can offer a solution to that. That is so important when you are trying to negotiate. And then also creating urgencies. So you can say, I have a lot of clients coming up in the next few months, but I'll offer you a discount if you sign on this month because I have a few spaces, right? Now you're creating urgency, you're getting people to want to buy now. So that's the same thing, I'm always running sales on my products and that's how I create urgency. Every quarter I'll run like a sale and that's how I get new people buying my products. And this is a really big one. One of the most powerful words in the music industry is no, believe it or not. And it's really hard for us to say no. Why? Because maybe we have struggled so much and maybe we are not used to people asking us for work and when they do offer us work, we wanna say yes. Or it's our insecurity saying, oh, we're not gonna get a job ever again and this is, if we don't take this job, no one's gonna ask us again. So what I try to do now, well, kind of, is say no to the budget, not to the gig. So let's say, hey, Sabrina, Sabrina, can you sing a cover band gig tonight? Okay, how much does it pay? It pays $100 for four hours. Oh, my rate now is $1,000 for four hours. And most likely they're gonna say no, but if they say yes, at least I'm getting $1,000 for that cover band gig, right? So that's a cool way you can do this, or you can just say no. And it sometimes works for me to just say no, and then they come around and they try to ask for more, or if it doesn't align with my goals at this point, it's really powerful to just say no. So, this is the lifespan of a sale. It takes a lot longer than you think. If you meet someone and you say, oh, uh, buy a ticket to my show, that's not gonna be enough, right? You need to have a first successful connection. So that's the first thing. You see a post, you get an ad, you see a DM, you see an email. Let's use the buying a ticket to a show as an example, right? So let's say you're an independent artist, you make a great video, and somebody sees it pop on their For You page or their algorithm, and they're like, oh, I like this person, but they don't follow them. Then again, they're waiting in the doctor's office and they see another video. And they're like, oh, this is the same person, I like this song. 
Then they decide to follow you. Then they see another video, and they, now they know the words to the song. So now when they're out with their friends, they're like, oh my God, you know that song? Then they go to your Spotify. Then they follow you on Spotify. Then they add you to the playlist. Then you make an offer, come to my show tonight in your area. Now they buy, right? So it takes a long time to get to that span. And that's why I really like to view every first successful connection as a planting the seed. And if you have a lot of seeds in your garden, it's all gonna bloom. And for me, it took nine months to actually get it to bloom, to actually get it to monetize, to keep showing up. And a lot of people don't stick it out. Whenever I get a one-on-one -on -one or someone comes and buys something for me, I like to ask them, when did you first discover me? And a lot of times it's like, oh, I followed you in 2020, and then I kept seeing your videos, and then I came to one of your free classes, and then I got an email about you running a sale, and now here I am, right? So it took a long time of me building that connection to get that sale. Same with the brands I work with. You know, Focusrite, or I don't want to say names, I guess, but some companies will say, you know, I was really, I've been following you for a long time and I was waiting for the right opportunity for us to work together. So it just takes a long time and you really have to think of each thing as planting seeds, planting seeds and waiting for it to grow. Okay. So building the strategy, I am super, super strategic about every single thing I do. And these are the questions that you need to define. I really believe in having a roadmap. So many people are blind in this and they're just walking in the dark trying to figure out how to do it. This is the way. So from dreams to reality, the five questions to define. And at the end, I have a little uh, thing you guys can download, a worksheet that you can fill out. So you can take pictures, of course, but they will be there for you. So what do you want to do? Be really specific, not just, oh, I want to be an artist, right? Be like, I want to get 10,000 fans by April 2025, and I want to play at a festival, a specific festival. Maybe it's Coachella. Um, two, what is your mission statement? This is a selfless commitment to your fans and audience. We'll talk more about that in the next slides. Who are the people that support your goal? This is very, very specific, right? A Kanye West fan is gonna look, act a lot different than a Boy Genius fan. It's so different. How are you going to reach them? So that's the marketing aspect. Are you gonna do social media? Are you gonna do paid ads? Are you gonna network? And how are they gonna support you? And that's the sales. People were buying my MIDI pack that were excellent piano players. And I would reach out to them and I'm like, why are you buying my MIDI pack? And they're like, oh, I just wanna support you. <laughs> so even though you have like a tip jar or whatever, they wanna feel like they're, they're doing something to help you, right? So you just offer them ways to support you. Your fans will, believe, it, believe me, they will. Okay, so I wanna use, I'm gonna do a few examples of these. I'm gonna browse through these very quickly so we have enough time for questions, but my example, this is for me. What did you want to do? I wanted to work with music tech companies making 10K per month. What is your mission statement? My mission statement is to make music production more accessible to more people. Who are the people that support that goal? For me, it's singers, songwriters, producers, instrumentalists, music tech companies, ad agencies. How are you going to reach them? Me, 100% social media. I hate getting rejected, so I don't like to do any outreach. And whenever I do outreach now, which is not very often, but if it's a plugin I really want, I'll, I'll shoot my shot, and believe it or not, I still fail <laughs> a lot of the time. Even though people pay me thousands of dollars for videos, they, I, they'll still get rejected. So how are they going to support you? They're going to hire me to make content, um, and our music, and buy my products. Okay. Example, an artist. This is just one specific example. What do you want to do? I want to get 100K streams per month and I want to play at Coachella. What is your mission statement? I want to create music that people will dance to. Who are the people that support that goal? People who like dance and house music, wear festival clothing, travel to raves. How are, they, how are you going to reach them? So you're going to reach them as social media. Maybe you're going to play smaller festivals or uh, connect with other artists, like-minded artists, and open up for them. And then maybe you're going to do paid marketing for some of your merch or some uh, like-minded like product. Maybe you have like rave light shoes or something. And how are they going to support you? They're going to stream songs, buy merch, ticket sales, tip during live streams, et cetera. OK, producer, produce for five unique independent artist per month. What is your mission statement? Create sonic experiences that transcend genre boundaries. Who are the people that support that goal? Fusion artists, self-funded artists, singer-songwriters. How are you going to reach them? Outreach, social media referrals. How are they going to support you? Hire you to produce tracks, royalty streams. 
So once you have this kind of guideline, this roadmap, now everything makes a lot more sense. Now it's that much easier to start planting these seeds to grow, right? You focus on this. And if you have a lot of steps, you do one step at a time. For instance, let's take me as an example. My first step was to work with music tech companies. I've more or less achieved that goal. I've worked with so many music tech companies. Now I want to start doing more presentations. So here I am putting myself out there. This is my first big one on my own and I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> but we do this. We force ourselves to be uncomfortable. We never stay, you know, I like to call myself the pivoting queen, you know? <laughs> we keep at it. <laughs> okay, tips to success. Again, I'm gonna go through these really fast so I can answer questions. Um, do not spend more than you make. Don't make the first mistake I've done with my two other businesses going to zero. It sucks going to zero, right? Stay in the green. This time when I built Sides Productions, I was doing everything DIY until I needed to start paying, for, until I started making money. So I was, when I was doing my live classes, I was DMing people, do you wanna come? Oh, I wasn't DMing them, they were DMing me. Then I said, send me your Zelle, and I had people pay me through Zelle. I didn't have people, I wasn't paying for a service to send out tickets because I didn't wanna spend any money. Um, set goals for yourself. You are your own boss now and start acting like one. Make vision boards. I really believe in manifesting and asking the universe and the universe will provide. Prioritize your health. If you don't have your health, you have nothing. <laughs> this is really important. Adapt and find the silver lining. Every failure is an invaluable lesson. Take the L, get back up, and try again. Enjoy the process. Trust me, whenever you get to the end goal, it lasts three seconds. And then, you, and then you're like, wanna keep going at it. So please enjoy the process. Um, don't give up. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This is gonna take time. You're thinking big picture. Make one year plans, three year plans, five year plans, 10 year plans. Um, build a mailing list. Even if you have a huge success on social media right now, you need to uh, find multiple ways to connect with your audience, so build a mailing list. Sometimes I make a ton of sales just from sending out a newsletter. Lead with confidence, fake it till you make it. Believe it or not, I've only been producing three years and I've been able to work with some of the best producers in the world and that's all because I've led with confidence. Um, offer traits and collabs with others. This is a great way to save money and to help you learn and grow. And lastly, create your own opportunities. If you're not getting on Spotify playlists, make your own Spotify playlist and put yourself on it. If you wanna be in a musical and you're not getting a part, write your own musical and cast yourself. I truly believe that Lin-Manuel would not be as successful as an actor if he didn't write his own musicals. And create your own band, right? Uh, Okay, oh, and the last thing. <laughs> this is 99% of mindset mastery. You need to have the confidence, the unwavering determination, and the absolute belief in success through hard work and perseverance. And you can do this. If you don't believe in yourself, nobody else will. And this is this download scan that you can have to uh, download all those questions for yourself. It's just gonna send you a worksheet, just send your email, and then just fill out the form and it'll send you it to your email. And thank you so much for being here for my first lecture, <laughs> big lecture. And now we're gonna um, off for the floor for Q and A. Um, I don't know who has the microphones for the Q and A. Oh, okay, oh great, oh yes, okay. So maybe if you guys wanna form a line if anyone has a question behind it and I'll try to answer as many as I can. We have some time. <laughs> thank you for your workshop, this was like, for me, most helpful out of all the ones that oh my I've gosh. Paid, but <laughs> how do you, do you have any tips on taking the L very well, like how do you get back on your feet? Yeah, I mean, you really have to think of it as the big picture. And I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have those failures, you know? Even when I'm talking about music production, my friend, I was like, you know, oh, I'm just learning music production. I feel so insecure. And he's like, but you did it. You know, you were creating all of those arrangements for the girl group in GarageBand. So it makes sense that now, you know, you're really bringing all that information to you when you're, when you're building in Logic. So you just have to like really say this as like, this, the only reason the next thing is coming is because of this, this failure. And you just have to keep pivoting yourself and pivoting and asking yourself those tough questions. What went wrong? Why did it go wrong? How can I turn this into a positive? And honestly, you just have to endure it. <laughs> I know it sucks. I mean, I've had so many failures and you just have to know this, these feelings are short-term feelings. 
And it's sad because even the good moments are short, short-term feelings. So you just have to know, you just have to keep trucking on. I see. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Of course. Any tips on social media sharing and strategy? Oh, I, have, I can talk about social media for three hours. <laughs> But I mean, it's pretty much the main thing that I talked about here. And then obviously, I also have like a social media like course, and I do a lot of social media stuff, so we can always branch out there. But with social media, it's the same thing. It's who is the audience, who, what is your goal, who are the people that support your goal, and what kind of content would they like to see? And then you have to learn the skill of creating good content for those people. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. Hi, Saez. My name is Armand Luna. Thanks for coming out. Um, Thanks for coming. i you for the while, and you're like the first person that I've seen on social media that is exactly the same person. And so uh, <laughs> I have a question and a comment on that. Um, in a world where it's easy to be a fake and multiply and just see what's successful and try to copy as an artist, how do you stay true to yourself and show peace time in a way that you could sell, but also stay true to your music? Because my success is because I'm authentic. Every single thing about what I do, I, I, and this is why I always tell people, don't copy my content. You guys can copy my content and you'll get likes and comments and views, but I'm, I already, Apple already knows my content. Do you know what I mean? And all these people know that's me. That's what I do. You know, I'm not, I'm not a perfectionist. And you could see that in my content. So now when other people are making other types of content, like guerrilla style, like mine, they're like, that's sides, you know, that's side stuff. So I really think it's just like, just tap into yourself. Tap into yourself, and even if you think that's not going to be the most popular thing, just showcase that, you know? And then eventually, you'll see people will start copying you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm a little She's nervous still. Here. <laughs> I've worked with her. <laughs> She's amazing. She helped me with my game so much. But full disclosure. How do you manage your time as an artist, as a producer, doing social media? I'm a psycho. <laughs> I mean, I just want to know, like, what's your day like? What is, you know, I mean, day? I'm a really bad person to answer that question because I love what I do so much that I live to work and I don't have, you know, people will invite me like out to parties or out late nights, you know, on New Year's Eve, I was working. And I know that sounds like bad to some people, but I really feel like we have um, chapters of our lives, you know? And I had my partying chapter through my 20. And I really, I saw the world, I've been to seven continents. I did, I did all this awesome stuff. And this chapter in my 30s is like, working cap, you know? I'm just, I'm putting my head down, I'm working, I'm, build, I'm in the building phase of my life. And then later on, I'm going to, you know, enjoy, enjoy life more. But I am enjoying my life, honestly. Like, this is what I really love to do. And then another thing is like, when I am out and about, like with my family or friends, I really just try to put the phone away. But these are the topics I like to talk about. So a lot of times when I'm out with my friends and families, we're still brainstorming on what I could do next or what we can do together, et cetera. Is there a certain time of day that you do your social stuff? So I do do um, time blocking, and that's helped me a lot to stay productive. And I also started doing this new thing where I light a candle in my studio, and I like try to see how much it goes down <laughs> before I stop working. And yeah, it's just that kind of stuff. I do have like a, sorry, I keep pushing my products, but I do have like a digital <laughs> download that I have like my time blocking. So I'll say, okay, 9 a.m. I'm doing this, 12, at 12 p.m. I'm doing this, 3 p.m. I'm doing this, and then I have an ongoing list. And if I don't finish something on that list, I start it the next day. So that's kind of how I how I get going. And do you have boundaries on your phone time? Like no, I have no boundaries. <laughs> okay. I have it on Do Not Disturb when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Hi, sides again. Hi. Hi. Um, I kind of have a loaded question. I wanted to know if you're on any other platforms besides Instagram and TikTok. YouTube. And then, um, how do you manage cross promotion on those two platforms? Because I know that Instagram does not like when you cross promote TikToks with the logo. Yeah. Like, what are your best practices so for that? I film everything in TikTok. That's just the one I first used. That's where I kind of got my skin in the game. So I film everything on TikTok. And I download it on TikTok from TikTok without the watermark and without text. 
so just the raw video footage. And then I upload it onto Instagram, but I, when I put it on Instagram, I add the Instagram captions and I add the Instagram text on Instagram. And then I do the same thing with YouTube Shorts. So I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, threads, kind of. And yeah, and then for my long form, which I'm really bad at, um, just sticking with it, so much stuff to do. But that I use uh, film with Streamlabs, and I just stre uh, Streamlabs, I use Streamlabs to record my screen, and then I have a camera watching me, and then I have to edit it. It takes forever. And then, uh, thank you. And then, um, what are some similarities and differences that you've seen from between the audience engagement on Instagram and TikTok? So these things are always changing. When I first started, like TikTok, I got like 100,000 followers in three months, or so, so crazy, crazy quick. But now TikTok has changed so much since 2020, you know? Like the only celebrity on TikTok then was like Will Smith, and now it's like, and Jason Derulo. And now it's like everyone and their mother, and every um, time you swipe, there's like an ad, an ad, an ad, an ad. So it's a little bit harder to grow now on TikTok. Um, Instagram is definitely kind of my bread and butter of where I'm selling everything right now. But I've learned to never stay comfortable, especially with the algorithms and the apps. They're always changing. They're always going through waves of motions. And to just keep planting the seeds for going forward. Um, I've actually done the best getting paid on YouTube. Like YouTube pays the most. And even though I don't have a lot of Fall, as many followers as my other accounts. Um, my videos are super like searchable, so people will be like, oh, how do I do this one thing in Logic? And then it'll show up in the Google search. In fact, one time I was like, oh, how do I do this one thing in Logic? And I Google searched it, and my video popped up. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so like, yeah. So that's why YouTube is always gonna be king, because it's searchable. But now I think TikTok is getting searchable too. So you just kind of like have to plant seeds for the future. I really, I want to say this with like the numbers and the algorithms and all of that. I really don't focus on that stuff. I focus on my goals and not the views and not the metrics and the numbers. Because if you just focus on that stuff, it's so draining. And it's also just changing so much and just so discouraging. So yeah, I just focus on the goals, not my numbers. Hi, so you mentioned Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Do you post individually to the platforms that you use, or do you use yeah, something like Yeah, I do it all manually. Um, you don't use anything like this? I really don't like using too many of the third-party stuff, honestly. I, Because I, I don't know. I, I've been suspended from Instagram before, like a computer suspension, and it was really silly because I was even working with Instagram. I was like, what is happening right now? So um, I've just been really careful with that kind of stuff, and I just take the extra time to do it myself. Okay. Yeah. Now, my second question is, do you use a calendar? Do you use like an editorial calendar? I'm really sporadic with okay. my life, okay. so I don't. But not to say that it doesn't work for other people. My friend, um, one of my other content creator friends, plans out his whole month. Mm -hmm. And it's just like all set to go. And he does schedule things. And he does use those stuff. And it works for them. But like again, because like my brand is so chaotic, I don't do a specific time. I don't do anything like that. I just post when I get to it. Thank you. I do post mostly every day. I try to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all good. Hi, my name is Christian. I wanted to ask you, within your career, was there a pivot where you noticed that you made a significant impact, where you started, that moment where you noticed a shift when things started going upwards? So when I was on TikTok in the beginning, I knew that like the longer you wait to monetize, the better. So for the first nine months, I was posting three to five times every single day and I didn't monetize. And people were at offering things, you know, $50 here, $75 there. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then I got in a weird financial situation where the person, my boyfriend at the time that I was living with, like dumped me and I was like, game on, I need to, <laughs> I need to monetize now. <laughs> and literally like two days later, I got my first big job from a company and they paid me five grand for one day and it was like nothing I had ever made before in my life. I mean I was unemployed. So that was the moment I think that was a shift. And then you have different levels, you know, like each level is different. Like when I released my Logic Pro course and I release it at 
Saturday, Saturday night at like 11.30 p.m., I messaged my broadcast channel, and I was like, hey, it's live, and I didn't think anyone would buy it, and then like 20 people started buying it like instantly, and I was like literally crying. I was like, I can't believe people like me, <laughs> you know, because it's like, I see you all here, and it's crazy, but even when I see people on the internet, it's like, it's kind of just like a number on the internet, and then I'm just in my house by myself with my boyfriend and my dogs, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's so weird to start conceptualizing it. So yeah, those are the two moments, I think. Nice. What do you think, uh, like the gig that you had, what do you think in your page or in your career was that, like, what attracted that person towards you? They said, they, said um, they were following me for a long time and they were just waiting for the right project. So they must have been following me, you know, since I started, because like, that's the thing, like 2020, that time, 2021, we were all at home still on TikTok, scrolling around, and here they were seeing my Logic Pro tips and my content and stuff. And, that, and I really decided very early on that I wanted to do post, I wanted to make music tech content. I had done the gigs, I was done doing the gigs, I didn't want to travel, I didn't want to run around for a gig. So I really shifted my whole brand to my goals. Yeah. Sorry, just one more question. Yeah, of course. Um, would you say that your, your TikTok content and your, and your Instagram content differs, or is it kind of like the same? Post? It's the same. Yeah, I just post the same stuff. Okay. Sometimes one does better than the other. Sometimes one does, you know. Or if I'm experimenting and I'm not sure if I want to post something, I'll post it on TikTok. Because TikTok will show, like, you can post 100 videos a day and it won't show it to the same people. But Instagram, it might. So that's kind of, if I'm experimenting, I'll put it on TikTok. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. Um, so I was wondering if you had any tips for not running out of ideas um, for content. So that is kind of like where the skill comes in, right? It's starting to like think of these ideas. And the more you start trying things and the more you start scrolling around, you know, conscious creator scrolling around. So sometimes I'll put on a timer, 30 minutes, and just start scrolling around and seeing not even what people are doing in the music tech space, but what people are doing in the cooking space or the fashion space or whatever that's working. And I'm like, oh, okay, how can I make this my own, right? Copying like an artist is very different than copying verbatim. So I can do that. Or, you know, maybe network with some people in this room. Maybe you guys can have brainstorming sessions or different ways you can help each other. Like some of my best collaborations have been with Larry O, another music tech content creator. And yeah, so those are the kind of things to do. And then just when you're like out and about, so depending on your goals, right? So when I'm out and about and I'm like, oh, that would be a funny meme, like something happens, and I'm like, I need to make a meme about that. Or if I'm working in logic and I'm like, figure out a cool thing to do, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make a video about this. Okay. So yeah. Do you ever try to use AI for like ideas? And um, I use AI to help me write some emails because I'm not like the nice, I, I am nice but I don't know how to always sound nice. <laughs> so I'll put it in there and I'll be like, how could you make this sound nicer? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Um, I was wondering, so like you know what you're about and what your brand is, and there's people out there who are about the same thing, and you said like people are mostly reaching out to you because you have your things set up. Like how are you connecting yourself with the people who are about what you are about? So, and like you mean like my other friends, my other like Larry O and stuff like that? Pretty more like social media, like people are gonna find what you are. Like music tech companies and stuff? Um, I just have my email in my, in my bio. I mean, sometimes they'll DM me and stuff, but I hate when people DM me because it gets so, I get so many DMs now that it gets kind of like lost in the sauce. And honestly, like answering DMs is like my least favorite task for so many reasons, like sometimes I get some mean ones or sometimes I get, you know, weird stuff. So yeah, so usually anyone that's serious about business will find my email. That's like the first thing they do. And that's why I recommend everybody in your bios, it should be your name, what you do, how to contact you. Like it should be so easy. When I see people's bios and they don't have an easy way to contact them, I'm like, why don't you have that there? <laughs> yeah, and they just come to me. And then during the time, kind of like at the beginning of your pivot, how do you feel about kind of like performing to no one like before you have all these connections, you know? I even made a video about that. Like my first couple of weeks I'm posting on TikTok, I was so discouraged and I, I try to share it from time to time. And I'm like, I just, you just have to view it as documenting your process, you know? And you have to view it as a visual uh, diary. And then you can look back at it later on and be like, 
LOL, you know? Or like, look how far I've come, you know? So, like for instance, for right now, like I'm in this room with you guys and hopefully I can go beyond, you know, a million, maybe not a million, but like thousands of people. So I just, I just try to document everything and I just have that undying audacity that it's gonna happen. It's just kind of like that. It's just like, it will happen, it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Um, hi. Um, I like your books. Your crash course is really cool. Oh, thank you. I just got it the other day, so thanks for that. Thanks for getting it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I just have a couple technical questions, I guess. Uh oh. If you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, let's try. Not like pro tips because you know I got your like, uh -huh. crash course. But like um, when you're filming, you know yourself on um, your studio. Uh -huh. Do you um, do you have like a camera like? I use my phone mostly. Oh, okay. So mostly everything is my phone. So the most important thing when filming on your phone is the lighting. And that's where I feel like so many people mess up. So when I like organized my room, I made sure that my window was in front. So that's how I the light needs to be in front of you, not behind you. And then you want to you want to set up like a cool set in your studio. Something that is aesthetically pleasing a little corner, a little space, and you try your best with what you have. You know, I have a closet, it's not the best idea, so I put a curtain over it, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, and then I just use my phone. Okay. And then on my uh, YouTube, I use like a Sony vlogging camera, it's in like my, it, I put like a store on Amazon, so, because everyone always asks me the, these questions, so that's there. Okay, I'll check yeah. out. My, my other little question was that in your crash course, you have like, you know, the modules, now you can look through that. Yeah. And I was like, I was like wondering if you would share like the software you use? I use Canva. Canva? Yeah. That helps you with the modules? Oh, yeah. oh, I use Kajabi. So I host my classes on Kajabi. All of my classes are on Kajabi. Um, do not get Kajabi unless you're selling classes because it's pretty expensive. And as I said before, like stay in the green. Um, but yeah, I use Kajabi and then I use Canva. Yeah. I'm always open to sharing every single thing I do. So never feel afraid to ask me. I don't gatekeep anything. Cool, thanks for all your videos. Yeah. It's really helpful. Thank you. I don't know much, how much time we have. Oh yeah, we have some time still. Hey girl, I love, I love the fit. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for the info. So I just have a question about TikTok um, downloading the videos. Yeah. Because I think it's really hard to find videos that are good quality. Yeah. Um, and so I've been having issues and then I'll pay and then it'll download like I'll pay to get it downloaded without the watermark. So TikTok, if you have like the newest version of TikTok, you could just like, there's a little button that you can click to download it. And if there's not there, um, I just recommend, I was just screen recording my TikTok. So I would just try to like make it live, uh, full screen and then I just screen record it from my phone. And then do you, so now you can download without the I mean, I don't know what your TikTok looks like. Um, you can show me after, maybe we can just, I can just see. Okay, and when yeah. you record your screen, there's no... Well, yeah, if, you're, if you watch it back and if you can make it a full screen, then you can screen record that. And then you might have to crop it in a bit. Oh, okay. I'm always looking for the loopholes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hey. Um, so I'm doing music for movie trailers and brands and things like that. I've been doing it for quite a while, just with no interest in doing anything public facing. But recently I've been doing um, Instagram live stories and then people ask questions and it's amazing for me because I get to ask them questions as well. Like, yeah. It's kind of collaborative. But I have very mixed feelings about going full on being an influencer, doing a course and that kind of thing. I'd rather just... I mean, music. if you don't want to do it 100%, I wouldn't go for it. I think a lot of people kind of like dip their toe in things and they, they don't realize like how hard it is. Like it's so, making a course, even my crash course, like Ethan, my boyfriend knows, like I wanted to jump out the window. Like I was dying making it. It was so hard. So it's either you kind of like go all the way, go for it or don't. Yet, or at least for now. But you have your whole life. Making music and I don't mind putting the camera on and like, it's actually helping me connect with clients and stuff. Yeah, I, I mean, to, you know, take it. yeah, I mean, it's, it's up to you. Like, you're mm. the you're the captain of your shit. Mm. You get to decide these things. That's why I say, like, you're your own boss. Like, and you have to sometimes do these like hard conversations with yourself. You have to soul search, you know. And especially once you start seeing some success, you like. I loved it in Beyonce's documentary when she was just like, "I have to decide what do I want to do now. Like, what do I want to do? Like, do I want to be in a TV show or do I want to be making movies or do I want to go on tour? You know, she's she could just retire and do nothing. But of course, like we're artists, we want to do stuff. So you get to decide, you know. Thank you very much.
<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Women in the mix type thing, and so it's really cool to have watched your career literally just in one year grow so exponentially. And I'm always rooting for you. So oh, thank you. Um, but my question is a little less tech oriented, but more on the uh, fan and interaction side with people that are viewing your content or viewing like just reaching out. Like, how do you handle the the Overexcited people that are like over enthusiastic, and you're like, I don't know if you're gonna murder me or. If oh you're yeah, I have I have crippling anxiety. I used to be afraid to tell people I was coming to Nam because I thought I was gonna get shot. So I get it. I mean, you just kind of have to hope it doesn't happen. I don't know what else to say. Pray. Gun violence is real. Do you do you interact with them or do you like? Is there I. I mean, I used to kind of, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I tried to go through my DMs as much as I can, but like at this point, like I just don't have, because it's just like an ongoing thing when you have so many people respond. So, you know, I just, I, and I'd rather like, if I'm gonna respond to someone, give them my full vibe. I, I was toying with the idea of hiring someone else to respond for me, but I don't want somebody else to represent me or, the, or they think it's me and then they're so excited to talk to me and then it's not me. So, you know, I just try to lead with like as much empathy as I can from where they're coming from and just thinking about myself when I fan over people and how weird I must act, so, yeah. Yeah, we're all a bit awkward and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, I hope that helps. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, so my question is, how do you keep an audience without making them confused by, like, introducing yeah, so that's why I really don't. Do you know what I mean? Like, you won't see a picture of my dog unless he has, like, headphones on or, like, in the studio. Do you know what I mean? Like, you won't catch a picture of me on vacation unless it's, like, a picture of Logic Pro on the beach, you know? I'm very strategic about every single thing I post. Okay. Yeah. So, like, when it comes to, like, so I like doing fashion and, like, film. So is there any way... You can get creative, you know? Like I said, like... I will show Logic Pro on the beach when I'm on the beach, you know what I mean? So you can like, okay, film and fashion combined, you know, for your ideal audience. It's a lot different when you're just showing fashion. You could be like, fashion with a video I composed or whatever, you know? So you could get creative with it. For instance, like when I'm releasing a song as an independent artist, I can't expect my fans that like my Logic Pro tips to also like my indie pop song, right? That's just not, that just doesn't make sense. But I can do a remix competition and the, you know, metalhead can take my indie pop song and turn it into a metal song, right? So you can get creative if you think about the audience's perspective. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I hope that was helpful. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, my question is about receiving a lot of negative Feedback on oh yes. Media. And just in general, I see that everywhere, and then towards women, I feel like sometimes it's. Hyper oh yeah, I mean it's emotion. it's weird because a negative towards women is just like making it sexual, you know, or like can be about that. Sure. Listen, I get so many DMs about like, are you on OnlyFans? Are you on OnlyFans? I'm like, what about my content? <laughs> Screams OnlyFans <laughs> to you. <laughs> but um, honestly, I used yeah, <laughs> I used to really struggle with this, like to the point where I was so close to quitting. Like, really, and like my boyfriend knows, like I was so having a hard time. And then what I did was I would ask a bunch of other creators and I actually asked someone and they were just like I was like how do you he was a big youtuber and has has had a lot of success and I asked him I was like how do you deal with the hate comments and he was just like what do you mean he's like hate comments come if you have a successful video you know so like that's just like a metric of success because if you're just if your videos are just being shown to your fans you're not going to get hate comments I promise you, but once it gets pushed out to new people, people are gonna automatically decide if they love you or hate you, hate you or love you. And you're gonna get new fans and you're gonna get some haters. And that's just like the metric of success. That means you're doing the right thing. So recently, so funny the first question was about Fader, I have a video that super popped off about synth GPT. As you know, it's a super controversial topic. It is a super successful video. They've made, they've gotten a bunch of signups from the video, but I've also gotten, if you go through the comments, a lot of hate, thousands of haters, even mocking the way I'm speaking, mocking what I'm doing, you know, so it's just a metric of success. That's the only way to look at it. Yeah. That's a great answer. Yeah.
I don't know how much I'm going to earn. Hey, Sai. Hi. Um, a question from you just said. You were talking about, your, about staying focused and having one, mess, one message, and then you talked about your artist project. So do you promote your artist stuff on your main page, or do you have two separate? Um, I... My artist project is really just for fun, honestly. If I ever switch over to the fact where I'm like super promoting it, I would make a separate channel and do a separate thing. I just don't see that for me anywhere in the near future. Maybe one day, who knows? Thank you. Are we good? Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Oh, can we do one quick photo? It was amazing meeting so many like-minded musicians. Thank you so much for coming.